everybody welcome to the first season episode one of the Kansas City Dev Report. I'm so glad you guys are here. We're still learning all the technical aspects of, of using a, a service called Be Live while being on Facebook and um, we, we kind of messed up and didn't get the event link if you were signing up for that but hopefully you'll see us live on Facebook if not, we're going to have this recorded and we'll reshare it with everybody just in case you missed it. If you do come on, we'd love for you to type in the chat box um, just who you are and uh, where you're from. And uh, hopefully we will stay up with you. Also, as we're going through the show, um, if you want to type in the chat box um, uh, show notes, if you do show notes and give us your email address, so we'll we'll tag you and we will have the uh, script for our whole uh, show that we can give you. So it will be good to have that. So um, just type in show notes at any point and we'll get those, we'll get the uh, script to you, the show notes. So I'm Franny Knight uh, and um, I am a residential real estate agent. I started Urban Cool KC 13 years ago and Damon and I, this is Damon, say hi Damon. Hi, I'm Damon Patterson. Uh, I'm an artist, photographer, and I have an interest in Kansas City as a whole and Kansas City development. So Damon um, is always so inspiring to me. Damon and I worked on a project 10 years ago and um, we ran into each other again. And it was like, I've been looking to do, be a sponsor for Urban Cool KC to <clears throat> um, sponsor something that really affects um, Kansas City in bigger ways than just selling residential homes. And Damon and I just started talking and we kind of had a match and it's been really fun since we started uh, doing research and putting this together. So I, I can't tell you how excited I am to, to be here with Damon. I hope you all get to hear all the great things I'm hearing from him. So the first, uh, um, First episode, we're doing the streetcar, <laughs> um, and and the streetcar, uh, and we're going to have part one and part two. So, because there's so much to cover with the streetcar, and part of what we wanted to cover in each weekly show uh, with development, we want to cover small development, medium, and big development, and we want to, um, we just are interested in what each development has an impact on our city from a um, creativity, social impact, aesthetics, growth. Um, how does it empower all people to that want to develop versus just having big developers? So there's a lot of things. And, and I, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to ask Damon about this. Um, as we've been doing this and putting together this framework and what we want to cover, um, I, I feel like so many things get me hot under the skin. How about you, Damon, as you've been doing your research? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's definitely a lot that um, you really don't know until you dig in it. And with most things that are happening in the city, you just see construction. You see cranes, you see streets blocked off, you see buildings that were there disappear. You see things appear that wasn't there, but you really don't know how that came to be and how all the parts work and who's all the players involved, where the money comes from. And so that's part of my interest in this project is, is getting to do that research and learn about how the city works and, and all the different layers from, from drawings to, um, you know, when the first concrete is poured to um, 
who manages the property. So you get to learn all those different things. And, and that's kind of what excited me about doing this is I love to learn. I love to research. And, and now when I drive by places, I know more about it. Yeah. Right. That's a, that's very cool. I, I, so I, one of the things that's always so hard for me is what do we talk? There's so many things to talk about. And we've been working on the streetcar to share some, uh, you know, some history, some current things. Next week, we're going to talk about the next phase of, of the streetcar and its impact on us. And Damon has done so much research. research. As a matter of fact, if you um, want to go to, uh, we'll, we'll post a, um, a link and we'll have it in the show notes. We'll post it here in just a second. A link to all things streetcar. Uh, just like, I don't know what, 350 pages of, of information. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that like with an interest in it. So we decided on streetcar because it has, it's had so much impact in, on so many levels from the smallest of business levels to the artist level, to the feeling of, of culture and the spirit of Kansas City. And so that's why we chose the streetcar um, to start with. But I'm going to tell you, it was hard because every week that we've been working on this, Damon can attest to this. It's like, oh, but we need to cover the cat's drugstore. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a it's hot it's on a, them. It's a lot going on. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of issues and 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 then um you know let's let, what are all these apartments oh my god there's so many apartments going in and i want to talk about that so there's so many things we want to talk about so what we decided kind of the uh win-win for us with this is we're always going to announce ahead of time the the topic that's going to be our big topic for the week and then we're we will be sharing with you in our facebook feed all the places that you can go to give us questions, feedback. Um, we're, we're, we have accounts set up on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, YouTube, right? LinkedIn yep, and, Facebook. and Facebook. There's a lot of places that you can interact with us, but we'd like to get your ideas on the big topic we're talking about and questions you might have, things you think we should talk about for that following week. So next week you all can type in what's going to happen with our next streetcar expansion. Um, and then we'll always cover that, the bigger topic, but we'll throw in some current events too. We'll, we'll slap in a few minutes of what's happening in development. That's kind of a big deal. Um, and so, so we'll, we'll, we'll get to do both, but for this show, we're doing all things streetcars. So, um, so Damon, I, I just want to start with um, <clears throat> the history of the streetcar. Um, you yeah. did such great, such great research on what, when was the first streetcar in Kansas City? When when did that first happen? Was it 2014 or? Well, <laughs> if we're talking about the history of streetcars in general in Kansas City, then we're talking about the 1800s and specifically. Uh, 1870 was when um, the first streetcars were introduced in Kansas City, and they were actually horse powered. Just kind of funny, streetcars pulled by horses. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we actually had a very large, um, I think it was like somewhere around 700 different um, streetcars in the early. We we'll say early late 1800s then 1900s all the way up to about 19 um, 1957. That's when Kansas City's um, last of its like 25 streetcar routes kind of stopped, and that's because of buses. Buses had became a thing, you know. It uh, was like well. We're not doing we're not doing that anymore. And that's as a funny tidbit. Um, um, Rock Hill, Mr. Nelson, who was the publisher at the Star, and he had a lot of influence with being a publisher at the Kansas City Star. That there was plans to renew the contracts to keep streetcars going, and that just kind of got scrapped. And and buses 
we're, buses was was the thing. It was like, well, we're just going to do buses. We're not going to um, revive streetcars. And there's some pretty um, fun facts about, you know, just just the history, particularly um, um, the new ones are the numbering kind of leaves off where the old numbering was. So 50 years ago, we had, um, it was about 184 or so vehicles, streetcars, and it was like the 501 through the 585, they had them in three different series, and the 701 through the 724 series, and the 725 through the 799. So the new ones take off where those left off, which is the 801 through the 806, which I thought was a, a funny um, little fun yeah. fact. Yeah. So that's always interesting about how they how they name these streetcars. I never mm -hmm. knew that. That's pretty cool. So, um, you know, that just I, I, I think that it's interesting, the decisions that are made like that from we're going to now go to buses and um, like who makes that decision? Right. Is that a uh, an executive um, order decision? Is that, you know, is that made with the public um, input or not, you know? Yeah. And, you know, just moving at, well, like, why? Why did they go to buses versus, right. you know, with the streetcars? But um, so the, the. Probably has something to do with gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, wait a minute. So gasoline in. Um, uh, efficiency or in gasoline and profit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So probably um, had some stakeholders who had um, investments in gasoline, and and they were like, "Hey, we got to get rid of them street cars so we can sell this gas." Who knows? You know, it may have been something. Right. Like that. And you know, it's interesting. You know, neither one of us ha have a degree in urban planning and development. Right. Um, we, again, just like you said, we just love our city so much, and we love. To, to see what, what what things that developers are doing from city level to to just m people with money and um, and what's the impact and why is it being done and as we just described here it, a lot of times it's all about money and mm -hmm. it's not about the the future beautification community space the architecture the art of our city when it's just money and so, trying to keep that balanced is, is hard, right? And as citizens, how do we keep uh, our, our input into that? Um, you know, it's just, it's just tough. Okay. So there is a, um, uh, a an old streetcar. Um, I'm not sure what year it was from, but um, uh, that what was is that that's in the river market? Um, that was the 551. And that was in the 50s. So when <clears throat> one of those last ones was uh, the 551, and it's you can currently see that 551. It's at 426 Delaware on the corner of West 5th Street down by the city market. And another funny um, little tidbit about that car is it kind of went on tour after we start shutting our streetcar the last one's down it um it was sold in toronto where it continued to be used that was in 57 and then it was sold to san francisco in 1973 where it ran as a tourist attraction and then it wound up back here and um there was actually talk of putting it back you know into service but it's it it it's outdated and it didn't make sense and it only opened on one end and all this stuff and it couldn't bend. So ended up a union station, sat there and for a while and then it moved where it is now. And there's actually plans to um, turn it into um, a retail space or a cafe, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Wow, that thing's been everywhere. <laughs> right? A lot of history on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> the the living streetcar <laughs> back in our possession. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so um, so let's let's get 
into the a little bit deeper into what uh, what we feel just as citizens really listen again we're not like experts in this we just we're just like trying to get a feel for the impact of these developments on um, um, on our uh, community our businesses the equity the culture the art the third space so these are just things that Damon and I um, thought might be interesting to talk about, and we can just do those one by one. But um, so, so again, the the street, this evolution of the streetcar, this rendition of the streetcars, um, came about. What was it? Two thousand and thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Is that right? Uh, it was officially installed in twenty fourteen, and then it opened to the public in twenty sixteen. Do you remember the day they came out? I, I like kind of do. Yeah, uh -huh. I kind of do. And there was there was a lot of hype around it. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited. I, I remember when people were voting on it and it didn't it didn't initially people didn't just say, yeah, let's let's have a streetcar. You know, I think it it went through a couple of cycles of of being put on ballots. You know, people was like, hey, we don't yeah. we don't we don't need a streetcar. It just goes from city market the union station we don't need that so i know that remember it being a couple of kind of back and forth on it but it finally you know made its way to to get passed and and opened in 2016. yeah so um and then you know i just remember the streetcar and then uh it, it seemed like there was just this progression so power and light came about and then the streetcar and then mm. the royals won <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the royal like, like those three things pushed our city up a bit. Like it, it made us more um, recognizable um, as a residential real estate. I'm telling you, what started happening um, is we had. I started getting a lot of people who um, millennials who had moved out of. Kansas City to go be in another city and a little bit, you know, hipper city. And right after Streetcar and, and the Royals winning, we started getting an influx of people, of the millennials wanting to move back to Kansas City. It was their age, the cheaper housing, um, we're kind of cool now. And so I truly feel like these these things and especially, you know, I, I wouldn't separate any of them out, but the Streetcar certainly has given us um a cool factor it, it makes us more city <laughs> yeah That's how I, I, I think it coincides too with a lot of the development that happened in and around downtown because if you look at i mean in kind of a short amount of time there was kind of a revitalized interest in downtown in general downtown you have sprint center the crossroads you know, you have, and it kind of all connects, you know, it's like it's yeah. all kind of uh -huh. glued together. Yeah, I one, agree. One I mean, light and two light and power light, you know, like all that Kaufman yeah. Performance Arts Center. And because yeah. imagine, yeah. you know, 20 years ago, if you put a streetcar in there, there'd be nothing to do. There'd be nowhere <laughs> to stop and walk to you know, 20 some <laughs> years ago. So you kind of needed right. all that to happen first. Right. Um, so, what about uh, the businesses? What? What? How did the businesses fare from the streetcar coming in? What do you think? Uh, it was probably it's probably some a lot of positives for businesses as far as um, just having a moving, free attraction. If you happen to have a business on that route, and you have people that, that are just like, hey, let's go ride the streetcar. You know, it's not that like they need, to, many people probably don't ride the streetcar because they need to go from city market to Union Station every day. I'm sure there is a large population that does, but just from what I've seen, a lot of people ride it as sort of a attraction or a novelty. And mm -hmm. if you have a business on those stops and you have an attractive storefront, you might be, that might give people a reason to get off and, and see what you got going on at your business. So I'm sure there's a lot of positives for 
people that have yeah. you know, retail space or whatever, a restaurant or boutique or whatever on those stops yeah. just to have yeah. traffic. Yeah, I think I certainly have seen more businesses pop up along the, the streetcar line. And as the extension is getting ready to happen, it's um, there's a lot of property being traded in hands right now <laughs> along Main Street. It's not just, and I don't mean, I mean commercial, like there's a lot of, just a lot of, lot of commercial space. And, you know, um, I, I have to, to highlight the one thing that I just think is so interesting is parking lots. Um, oh, yeah. When, <laughs> when the very first thing I saw uh, from another urban planner who was a streetcar expert in other cities. They brought him in and do a video to let everybody know this is what's going to, you know, a little bit of promotion uh, to get everybody to buy into it. Like you said, not everybody was into it at first. And I just remember the one thing that stood out for me, which I thought was both good and bad, especially for Kansas Cityans, um, is that he said all the, the big parking lot spaces um, were going to go away. And um, what happens is they things start getting built in those parkings, those big parking lots, right. and um, and that's d density. And so the more density you have, so you go that, that it goes vertical, and it serves the businesses like like more people down there, <laughs> um, so apartments and all that. All it's it's. Um, it, it helps the businesses. So the parking lots, but see now, now a lot of Kansas Cityans. I wish we had people on here talking because I know we'd get some people saying, "Yeah, but then we don't. Then we're like too big of a city because now we can't park anywhere. Now we've got to, you know, go park in and pay for a parking garage." And and um, I, I'm going to tell you that the the hack I told you <laughs> last time we talked about this, Damon, is that look. The greatest thing about the streetcar is you can go find all kinds of places to park and ride the streetcar to your location. So I right. I have I have my special places I park on big events. When we used to have big events, they're coming back. I like at Sprint Center and T-Mobile Center now. Um, the, the, you know, there's all kinds of places you can can go park and get on the streetcar and get to it's it's I I think it's fabulous. I'm, I'm gonna have but to remember that. <laughs> that's the that's the I one think, thing that think, bothers me about downtown is finding somewhere yeah. to park. Yeah, <laughs> especially doing an event great. or something. You know, it's like you might have to drive around for ten minutes, like circling where you're trying to go. You're like, uh, I need to go there, yeah. but I gotta like. You know, circle around for ten minutes, and that's what yeah. irritates me about it. Yeah, but you know, and so, so the, a lot of these lots got built. They've been bought up, and things are, like all the apartments that you know. I will always want to talk about is you know, like you said, the one light, two light. The, the, I'm, there's more than just one light, two light, but there's city apartments, and 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 um, and you know what's I just read about the impact on our city as a whole. Um, so in the Kansas City Business Journal, I'm gonna make sure I get this stat right, but 80% of the people in the, all the new apartments in downtown are new to Kansas City, which is interesting, right? That like, is interesting. It's like, cause you know, <laughs> part of me is always like, Oh, there's too many, all this development around apartment, you know, apartments, apartments, because you that's capitalism. You know, you make money with that. And it doesn't really serve our city to just keep building apartments. And when literally that just came out in the Kansas City Business Journal. So 80% um, of the people, 80 of all the people new, new apartments, apartments downtown are new to Kansas City. And they're not moving. Like sometimes it's transient, but they're staying in Kansas City. So Man, that's great, right? That's great for the city. I mean, that's yeah, more it's I'm, population I'm all about growth. Yeah. I mean, yep. yeah. So parking lots are, are kind base. of a yes tax base. If we can get the the taxes moving in the right way, <laughs> which we're going to talk about a few episodes from now, because that's um, something that's huge for us. We're going we're going to be teaching some things here and there about uh taxes and and developments and what we know about it 
again, from kind of a lay perspective. Um, okay, so um, we're getting close to our time. Um, was there anything back in this uh, uh, criteria um, effects that you wanted to talk about um, with, so we talked about business equity, like social equity. Do you, yeah. do you have anything to say about that, Damon? Uh, well, like real estate value, I think is interesting that, you know, what I remember looking at property, I think in commercial property, that's not too far from there in 2000, I want to say 2000, 11 or so and i mean a lot of that property is almost doubled like just it whether you're buying it or leasing or renting it it's literally doubled and and i've i've went and looked just for my own you know kind of scientific study to go and i see a building available and i'm like yeah, i'm gonna call them and see what they're selling that building for or what they're leasing it for square footage and a lot of it is almost doubled and some of it even more just because of the activity that's happening in and around it. So I think the way property value fluctuates in development is pretty interesting. It's like, well, this is the same building. It's not, hasn't been updated or renovated. There's, there's nothing new about it, except mm -hmm. now they have more neighbors. So right. I, I always think that's interesting. You know, it's like, well, yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it's affecting so many different levels of equity. Like, you know, um, I mean, so like, like the crossroads, you know, I mean, it, it just barely gets past the crossroads because it goes to union station, but, um, you know, the, all the artists who lit were a lot of them living and working in the crossroads, um, had to move out and so so what do you have in the crossroads now like yeah it, you know it's it's um businesses you know that's a and and funny um that's kind of a funny cycle because i kind of remember when it was like not as commercial it was kind of like this is where you go if you you know you want to have a an affordable space to just practice your craft and get better at but it's like the more, the more that that, I want to say the more artists that came there and, and I want artists built that, you know, in a sense of there was right. nothing there, nothing there to see, but what right. artists were creating, but the more that they drew people in, the more they drew in more developers, you know, so now their studios cost more and the property next door costs more. Now the cool coffee shop or breakfast joint is gone because they can't afford their rent. So there's, there's definitely a lot of like, you know, there's there's positives and negatives to developing and, and growing. Which is, that's probably a whole podcast by itself. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, we will talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because like I, a, a whole podcast on, okay, where did the artists go? And that's actually how we kind of met because we were right in the middle of, of, uh, you know, a project we were doing together on an east side neighborhood um, with some revitalization. And it was really designed to help artists come find places to live and, and congregate because artists need to be together. You know, the, the separating, the, the, everybody scurrying about town, there's something about the energy of bringing art and artists together. So anyway, so it's all moved, right? And so there's places where we know they're, they're, it's been relocated, but it's still a little um, disjointed, I believe, right now. And I do believe that's that it has hurt the artist community. And listen, y'all, I'm I'm a believer that you you gotta we gotta have art. If art doesn't doesn't happen in a city, it is a sad day. And um, right. we, we you know for art for for consumption and art for the artist who live it you know and damon knows that more than anybody i mean you you created one of the, a, amazing documentary called um 
Art Saved My Life. If y'all haven't seen that, yeah. or if you've seen it, go see it again. It's on YouTube. Just do a quick search. We'll put it in the show notes. But that was yeah. so impactful. I think people should look at that again. And how to, yeah. how to, it's like, it's okay to develop and, and Aries get gentrified. Balanced but, growth. Uh, yeah. So, but how do you treat your artists in the meantime? How do you treat the people who, who are contributing to the to that area? Um, it's hard. This is hard. This is hard stuff. It's not anything that I'm. I have the answer to, but being aware of it, we always should be aware of it and do what we can. Um, okay. So um, the the very last thing I'll, I'll just say, just because I. Um, um, you know, I'm a residential real estate agent. Sometimes I feel like I should have been a commercial agent because I love it. I love development and, and business and property so much. But I will tell you, the streetcar also has an effect on our our real our residential real estate. It it is anything within blocks of um, the streetcar. And I'm going to tell you, not so much the first rendition of the streetcar, but as soon as it got announced and official, and the money was came available from grants and stuff um, for the extension to UMKC, uh, all of Midtown prices, I mean, the market is kind of strange this, you know, these last few years anyway, because prices are going up and we have low inventory, but it's even going up more in the Midtown area um, all the way to UMKC. And um, again, whether that's good or bad, I, I don't, I'm not the one to answer that. I'm just telling you it's happening it's it's a it's a thing um uh i do believe that there's a lot of houses in midtown that need some love and attention um some 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 historic houses your um can't see shirt waist and and um, bungalows and stuff that that have been around for over 100 years that are gonna go away if we don't get you know get them renovated um and so that can happen as long as there's not a bunch of teardowns <laughs> going on. Um, but um, it can be a positive in that way. But I just had to throw that in. It does affect resident. I and mean, we're talking commercial and community and all that, but it does affect residential real estate quite a bit. And we can talk about that a little bit more in part two next week. Um, not too much. I want to uh, overcrowd our uh, podcast with residential. <laughs> I have enough of that. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, is there any last thing that you want to add, Damon, that we didn't cover before we wrap this up? Oh, just a couple of facts in case people didn't know. The streetcar is free, so mm -hmm. it doesn't cost anything. Um, there's, there's three cars that make up each streetcar, and capacity is approximately 150 riders. And you can take bicycles, wheelchairs, and strollers on it. They all have Wi-Fi, and they have Wi-Fi along the routes. And there's 16 different streetcar stops. So those are just 16. a few. Interesting. Yeah, 16 I, different stops. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. That is very, very interesting. Um, um, again, I will, um, we'll get some show notes together. We'll, we'll, we'll have this transcribed and we'll also put in, um, the link the, that's the big link, um, to get you more data if you want that information. Um, and, uh, so if you're, listen, if you're watching this later, we hope you are. We're also going to turn this into a podcast. It's going to be our first, uh, my first podcast. I'm so excited. It's going to be so much fun. Um, but we'll get, um, we'll post um, the, the more information on the Casey Dev Report page. Um, hopefully, you'll be seeing this, and we'll be sending this out to to all our other platforms, so you can watch it again. Ask for the show notes, and and um, get ready for next week. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and um, and we'll get uh, the podcast up. Um, and, you know, I have to tell you, podcast it, world is changing. Um, iTunes, uh, you actually have to be uh, making money with a podcast. That's going to be a new thing happening. So we'll, we'll post it on other places, but we'll, we'll get that up too. 
All right. Well, this was fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, I'm Damon, it's Franny, and this is the KC Dev Report.